Hello and welcome back. This video is a mashup of content which I have cut together because I refuse to throw it away because it's so fucking hard to get this crap in the first place. Enjoy. So it's 6.30. It does say the time on this jet watch is from 7 a.m. But no one seems to be stopping me, so. Do one side first. That water's cold. Come on, I've learned not to do wheels first. You've taught me that much, hey? Body first, wheels afterwards. And use the lance to power the brush off before you start. I know it's not perfect, but it's a fan, you know? As long as it's clean, that's all that matters. It's gonna get dents and scratches, it's a van. I mean, if I can try and keep it to a minimum, then great, but that's a lot of foam. Yes, it's 6.30. I'm out washing the van because I find it very therapeutic. This smells of, it's like bubble gum. <laughs> that lance is so hot, I can't hold on to it. Right, now I've done the body, I can do the wheels. Yeah, there were people in the comments saying, you know that video I did the other week about when I was cleaning the van out? And they were basically saying just, it doesn't matter what your van looks like, just go out and earn the money. And there are a few people saying that. I would, I would respectfully disagree. Your vehicle essentially is the, is the face of your business. That's what people see. And if you open your back doors and your van's full of shit in the middle of Great Portland Street, and then you open your van and it's immaculate, you know, I think that's going to leave an impression. I think your vans are your mobile, they're your mobile advertising, they're your mobile image, you know? They're what get you work. And I think if your vans are dirty, I think that leaves an impression with a customer and not necessarily a good one, you know? Besides, I like coming out this time of the morning and doing this anyway. Think about it, why do you think whenever you're driving around London and you see Pimlico plumbers, you'll never ever see a dirty Pimlico van? Never. His vans are immaculate. There's a reason for it, you know? It's image, it's what people think of your... You know, people make a judgement call when they see a dirty van, I guess. Time up. How much was that? A tenner? Thereabouts? Do you think I can stay here and shammy it? I'm sure there's an art to using a chamois, which I don't know about, but I watched that Greatest Showman last night. That wasn't a bad film. That's worth a watch, I thought. If you're bored one night. Yeah, that video I did last week of when I was emptying the van out, I think the resounding response was basically you, you've either got to take up golf or get laid. What was the other one? Have kids. They were the three that kept coming up time and time again. Problem is when you work for yourself, it's not as easy as that. Especially when you've got something that you're doing that's very personal to you and very, it's not as easy as that. Which is why I struggle on weekends. Hence it's a Sunday morning at 6.30 and I'm out washing the van. Because it's not as simple as just switch off and go and play golf. I don't think it is anyway. Especially when you've got a, you know, when you've got a goal that you want to reach, very difficult to switch off. I'm not saying it can't be done, I mean it can, but I haven't mastered that yet. I mean, it does cause I mean, disagreements, if you want to call it that. It does cause disagreements. I don't even think this is making sense, what I'm trying to say. You know, I was saying about not being very articulate. Yeah, when you've got a goal, and that's the only thing that's in your mind, I think you'll do just about anything to go and get it. And sitting on a weekend scratching your ass doing fuck all ain't achieving it. It's not getting you close to that goal, you know? You know, I didn't move here to go to the pub on a fucking Friday. Fuck that, if everybody else wants to do it, that's fine. 
but I've damn well got a goal to reach and I'll fucking reach it and you ain't going to reach it by getting pissed up in a pub on a Friday. <laughs> it's, com it's completely empty, there's absolutely no one here, it's such a rare sight. Normally this Brent Cross Tesco here is absolutely rammed. In fact, I'm going to move you to the other side. Yeah, and I like doing this as well anyway. Everybody in this world has got different things that drive them. Everybody. Yeah, it's difficult because you're supposed to have quiet time on a weekend, which I get, which is why I have two days off, or I try to. But of course, you get to the weekend, I just feel like I'm not earning money, I feel like I'm not, I don't know, you just feel like a waste of space on the weekends because you're not, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is reaching your goal, you know? The amount of people who give up on their goals halfway through because they can't be bothered to just push hard and reach it. I sure as shitting hell ain't gonna be one of them. I guess I'm just one of those people that believe if you want something, you've got to fucking push. There's only two people in this world that come to you, and that's tax, the tax man and bailiffs. Ain't no one else will come to you in this world. But I do understand there's a certain element of switch off time you've got to have. I do get that. So I am learning it. I just haven't, just haven't found it yet, I guess. God, what a beautiful morning. How nice. without falling off the ladder in the middle of the road. Oh, fucking hell. I think I may have broken a few man manual handling legislations there. Right, that was job one of the day done, and it's quarter to nine. So that was changing a little, you couldn't see it, that was changing an MR16, a little halogen transformer, which are fantastic jobs, I love them. If you could do those jobs every day, I'd be a really happy man because you can bill good money for them. You know, it takes you 20 minutes to change a transformer. It doesn't take long and you can bill your hours labor, sort of 75, 80 quid. And then, you know, by the time you put a 20 quid transformer, it's sort of, it's 100 quid all day. So it's a nice, I like them because they're nice, easy jobs, you know? And if you can do two or three of those in a day, you can do them in under an hour easily and you just earn good money doing them. But I had to fit this in this morning because I'm supposed to be down in um, Great Portland Street this morning, carrying on with that kitchen refit you've been watching me do. All right, that's not gonna go anywhere. But before I go, I have got to go to uh, Ladder. I've got to go to City Electrical and pick up the contactors for that board you know for the oven and the hob so i'm going to load up and i'm going to go and do that now thanks a lot superb all right see you later on pal cheers mate uh if it's okay yeah That's the switch wire from the hob. So this is the one mill, the Enora. So this is what's gonna activate the contactor. And that goes into terminal one. Okay, that's terminal one. From the output of the RCBO to terminal one. Okay. Right, you've got a live and neutral to come out the RCBO and go into the top of the contactor. So that's like the feed in. Then you've got the, the trigger wire, which is just the little six amp switch upstairs, which you tap off out, you tap off terminal one, and then the switch wire of that goes back into A1, I think. But hold on, we can't do that. I can't tap off, out, I can't tap off terminal one. Otherwise you're gonna have a one mil cable protected by a 40 amp. I've got to, I've got to put a six amp RCBO in. I was just gonna tap. I can't tap this off terminal one. Right, six amp RCBO. Right, I, I can't take, I can't take this feed from this trigger wire off terminal one because terminal one is protected by 40 amp RCBO and I can't do that because you'll have a one mil effectively being fed via a 40 amp RCBO. So I have to put this six amp breaker into this six amp RCBO just, that just controls 
the trigger switch upstairs. I am rusty on this, I'll be honest. All right, let's, let's just go with the flow. Let's just work this out together as we go along. I like to think this is a learning experience for all of us collectively. The theory is when he presses the button for this little six, this one mil, that will activate the contactor and energize this hot wire. A2 is neutral from the supply side, so this neutral, I think, is what it means. Yeah. No. No. So you run a link from there down to A2. Right. Let's do that next. The difference is, I don't mind admitting I don't know stuff. It's cool, you know, because one thing I do know is that I know that I don't know particularly well how to do this, but I also know that there's a lot of people watching who also don't know and who are watching very inquisitively trying to learn. So I am a great believer of pushing yourself to learn as much stuff as you can, learn as much new, new stuff as you can. I really think it's... Shut up, Tom. You've said this in every video. No one cares. Right. Let me put the brown sleeve on now because I'll forget. I have a fresh hank. So the RC, you've got a six amp RCBO. Feet comes out goes up to the switch upstairs, the little light switch, almost. Switch wire comes back, it's port A1. I'm putting them at this end because I've got to put buzz bar here. And obviously I can't put that there because then you won't be able to continue the buzz bar. So they'll just sit at the very end. Yeah, rightly or wrongly, I'm using intuition and common sense. Right, this wiring diagram now says that terminal A2 is the neutral from the supply side. So neutral from the supply side, I'm going to assume it means this neutral on the trigger wire. Okay, so that's the neutral from the RCBO from the 6 amp. And then apparently terminal 2 is the switch live, which will be this one. So that's the chunky monkey for the hob. I didn't take the insulation in because it just, it congests the board so much. It, what I'll do, I'll leave the diagram that I've got here on the screen and you can sort of follow it as I'm doing it. Right, well I've cut that now so I fucking hope it's the right way. And then terminal 4 apparently is the load neutral, this one. So that one is for the oven and that one, no, that, that one there's for the hob, that's for the oven. But I'm just wondering if, do you think I can share the same 6 amp breaker? to do the trigger on that one. Seems like a waste just to put to put another a whole RCBO in just for the trigger of that. Seems like a bit of a waste. I'm gonna see if I can double it up. I don't think is that gonna cause the RCD to trip? Oh uh, no, because it's fed from the yeah, it shouldn't shouldn't matter. Why are those not lining up? That's an NK main switch and that's an NK RCBO and they don't fucking line up. Let's just get the cover on for a minute and then we can... Because I'm going to go upstairs and just do the tests on this cable and make sure we've got this wired right and working. Right, hob is in. Not a huge amount to see, I'm going to clip that 10 mil up there, like so. But it connects in the bottom of the hob. And then up here. That there's the finished result for the hob. But the cool part now is it switched via our switches here. So I just ended up having one for hob and one for the oven, which I thought was neater actually, because it's just a 20 amp grid switch, which just fits nice and neatly on that plate, rather than having the big 45 amp, you know, drum, drum switches. This is just a neater way of doing it. So you just turn it on there. So you still have isolation. It's just a neater way of doing it. And you can just have a nice neat little switch over there without having the big red honking switches. And that one there is just literally a six mil from the fuse board, which comes up on a 32 amp breaker and just goes straight into the back of that socket because most ovens nowadays are just their plug-in jobbies. In fact, I'll, uh, I haven't got the oven, but I can demonstrate with this. Plug that in. If we switch that on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you're doing a kitchen in future, that's quite a neat way of getting your, uh, you know, of getting your switches in a grid.